Good morning. While I was riding in uh, my bike this morning, um, I passed the, the, the fast-growing Fremont Brewery and I couldn't help but avoid the sweet smell of wort in the air. I looked, turned around and I saw the steam emanating from the building and I thought to myself, I got to make a beer. And so what happened is I came into work, locked up my bike, looked at the inventory of ingredients I had in stock. I saw that I had a couple cans of Cooper's Lager, um, some Safale yeast, and I still have some of my homegrown or my centennial hops that I grew on my own vines in the backyard um, that I had dried, you know, several weeks back. So 2013 harvest of, of my own centennial hops. So what I'm going to do is I did some research. I noticed that I could, again, make an American IPA, throwing those two cans of two Cooper's Lager together and using um, a sack, I, which I also happen to have on hand, is a sachet of uh, uh, American uh, uh, ale yeast strain, Safiel 05. So uh, quick brew, easy brewing. Um, I did some calculations and uh, it looks to me like the Cooper's Lager beer kit is 390 IBUs in its concentrated form. So what I was trying to do in my calculations, this is all quickly done this morning, was determine what the proper water level that I'm going to need to add to the fill mark. Uh, I mean, to, what fill mark will I need to achieve the proper IBUs for, say, an American IPA? Now, my research shows that the American IPA has an IBU range, final IBU range, of approximately uh, 40 to uh, 65 IBUs in its final format. And so I tend to be more moderate in my bitterness level desires, so I'm going to shoot for about a 50 IBU level in this beer. So the formula I came up with to determine the actual volume of water I need to add was uh, in the Cooper's Lager is 390 IBUs. So uh, I'm using two cans of Cooper's beer kits, at, uh, each maintaining 1.74 kilograms of, uh, of weight. So that's uh, one point uh, is 3.4 uh, kilograms total, and. Um, the final IBU level I'm looking for is 50. Uh, the uh, beer itself will come up with approximately 62.5 before fermentation. Uh, if I use, uh, uh, if I'm trying to achieve about 50, because there will be about a 20% reduction after fermentation. So putting the algebraic equation together, I came up with um, approximately 20 liters of water to use for this batch of beers. Easy peasy. And to get approximately the alcohol level that I'm looking for, I think I need to get maybe an additional 500 grams of dextrose to throw in. And uh, what I'll do is I have a huge bag of Centennial hops and that will be dry hopped just for the flavoring, uh, aroma, uh, type of uh, piney flavor that the Centennials uh, bring out, which is the typical characteristic of the American IPA. Hopefully it'll ferment out really clean, it's uh, easy brewing, and I'm back to work. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go down to my utility room here in the, my office building. I'm going to begin the process of uh, cleaning and sanitizing my existing equipment, which has been stored away for a while. I'm going to time it, start the clock, see when I begin, see when I end to get the, fer the, the wort stored away, and I will then ferment for about approximately one week, okay, and uh, at the, as, after seven days, I'll dry hop with my Centennial hops, and I'm going to dry hop without a net. I'm just going to throw the hops on top, and then I'm just going to rack to a keg after a week of dry hopping. Uh, it has worked for me in the past, works great. Um, I just actually killed a keg 
a beer like that. So, and it was a, it was actually more of an imperial IPA style beer. So I, I'm I'm pretty confident this will work great. Uh, so let's let's uh, let's get my camera downstairs and uh, we'll start shooting the video. Uh, just sanitizing. It's kind of boring, but I'm gonna throw it out, put it out to the top, show you my procedures, beginning to end, how long it's gonna take, and then I gotta get back to work. So cheers, everybody. All right, so I've rolled my utility cart into the utility room and inc included on my cart is uh, approximately five gallons of uh, water, which has been stored at, oh, I don't know, about 60 degrees uh, Fahrenheit temperature. Uh, the Cooper's uh, uh, fermenting vessel. And uh, see here I have the uh, two Cooper's lager kits that I referred to earlier. Um, a box of dextrose. I'll, I'll use probably about half of that. Um, and briefly, let me take my camera out here and I can show you. Uh, hi there. I can show you where I have the um, bag of hops from my backyard that I got these uh, centennial flowers. And uh, well, it looks like there's dry and uh, also this is uh, uh, a pot to heat up some hot water so I can blend the mixes in I'll just plug it into the outlet uh, let's see if, let me uh, oh before I go I also need to show you I'm going to use a uh, five star uh, for cleaning um, just it's been a while I'm not sure how clean the uh, uh, fermenter is and uh, if I, normally I clean it after I brew and then I just sanitize before I brew but this time I'm going to clean uh, and then I'll go just to be extra cautious I'll use five star star sand to you know make it sanitized and it, like I mentioned previously I do have Safael US05 yeast for this beer so uh, I'm looking forward to making a nice beer um, let me tell you what the time is right now so we can get started on my process. Um, it's 11.11 11 in the morning. All right then, I will speak to you soon. Okay, so I got uh, approximately about three gallons of uh, warm water in the uh, fermenting vessel along with a couple ounces of the uh, PB5. There's some leaves uh, floating around from my last dry hops. So I'll uh, make sure that uh, gets cleaned out of there. Um, use a soft cloth. You don't want any scratches on the uh, on the fermenter, and just you know, just just take precautions because otherwise, if there's scratches, you could uh, scratches can harbor uh, you know bacterial infections. And not fun for your beer. Although some people these days, I guess, like sour beers. So uh, as long as it's managed properly and makes a good beer, um, personally. I don't like sour beers, so anyway, I'll I'll use this fluid uh, on my croissant collar and lid as well, just to kind of make sure any uh, make sure they're clean, and then drain, rinse, sanitize with this star sand. Okay, so I'm just running some of that um, PBW through the uh, spigot. Just make sure you get your spigot clean. Once the uh, water level is down. Um, below the spigot. You can pop the spigot out, um, break it down, and then soak that to make sure that's thoroughly clean as well. So I used my croissant collar to hold anything, you know, the croissant collar and the, and the lid turned upside down, hold anything that's been cleaned or, or uh, ready to go. Um, so here, here's the uh, spigot broken up. Just let, you know, drop it in, soak it, make sure that's all finished. And it'll take no time at all. This stuff's pretty powerful. One thing I uh, one thing I want to add is that uh, they say star sand is a uh, no rinse sanitizer. Well, you know that's that is true. Uh, and in fact, the um, uh, the it, it'll actually help fermentation, is what I am told. So with the yeast, it's a uh, has ne uh, some yeast nutrient in it. But in this particular case, since I'm making the brew right away, I just I'd rather not. Uh, risk any uh, flavors that might be associated with the star sand, the acidity levels in it. So I am going to rinse it out. Uh, that's just my personal preference on this one. Okay, as my hot pot is heating up, 
I will take the cans of Cooper's Lager and pour them into the fermenter uh, and add about approximately the So that should do it. Then I'll just uh, pour the hot water into the cans so I can get out the rest of the malt extract from the cans. Be careful when you do that. Use a uh, oven mitt or uh, some sort of a cloth when you do that. Now make sure it's stirred up properly. And then at that point, uh, everything is dissolved. I will add the water that I have here to the um, approximately the 21 liter mark right here on the fermenter. And that should do the trick. I'll get my uh, 50 IBU, uh, hopefully, around there. Uh, and then once uh, fermentation is complete, after about seven to 10 days or so, I'll uh, add the dry hops. Oh, uh, the hop, the centennial hops. And I'll have my American IPA. Hot dog, awesome. It'll be ready for me to drink by uh, Turkey Day, Thanksgiving. Cheers. Right. Adding the malt extract to the can, I mean to the fermenter. Um, got the lid. Uh, lots of goo. Mm. Good stuff. Now this can has an expiration date of 2014. It's been a can that's been a while around for a while, but the expir date, expiration date in this case is predominantly for the yeast. Um, as the malt extract ages, it'll just darken a little bit, uh, which in this case, and it caramelize. Um, in this case, it is it, probably beneficial. Boy, that is bitter malt extract. Uh, <laughs> the, the concentration of uh, hot bitterness in there. So uh, if you like a bitter beer, this is a good one for you. Um, again, 50 IBUs, it's using two cans of Cooper's Lager. So I added some hot water to the can, make sure it's all dissolved in there so I can get the remaining amount. I'm going to pour that into the fermenter and stir a little bit. Then do the same with the second the can is pretty much totally cleaned out with the uh, extract into the fermenter. So now I'll just stir and dissolve that. Okay, I got the uh, two cans of Cooper's Lager in now and all properly dissolved and pretty well blended. So I'm just going to add about 500 grams of dextrose now. Okay, dextrose added and mixed. Got my two soldiers uh, and the remaining dextrose and of course my hops. So I'm just going to top up to the, uh, well I'll probably top up first to about 19 liter mark. So I'm just topping it off. Right now it's at uh, approximately 15 liters. I put the Croizen collar in already so, to reduce the splashing. Um, I think uh, you know, when you're dumping the water in, there's a splash of things. So. Uh, this up to about, well, I might just give it a go up to 21 liters actually, instead of just staying at 19. Um, I was going to do 21 to see what my temperature level is, but let me, or 19. Uh, looks like the temperature is at 26, so that's pitchable. Um, maybe, uh, here we go, pitchable for the yeast. And that's 20 liters right there. Okay. Uh, just a little shy. I think that's good enough. It's 21 and a half liters, so I'm gonna go with that. Um, uh, I guess you can see that about the 20 liter mark. Um, and uh, let's see, you can see we got here is the temperature. It's on the outside. It looks like it's 24 degrees Celsius. So we're all good to go. I think I can pitch the yeast right now. I'm going to take a quick hydrometer reading first, though. I got my cart all ready to go, rolling back to my storage facility, and uh, we're all good to go. I got uh, it's a relatively short time. Um, let's see what I got right now. 12:09. So we did this in uh, in under an hour, uh, cleaning, sanitizing. Um, filling the fermenter up with the ingredients and in seven days we'll dry hop. Again, I got to pitch the yeast still. I'll uh, do that once I get it moved to the storage facility 
and I'll take gravity. Cheers, mates. Okay. Um, uh, my hydrometer reading. Let's get a quick look on that. That looks like it's about a 1.0. Oh, I got terrible, terrible videography here. Uh, five four. So that's you know the foam will subside a little bit. I'm gonna hold on to this just for a while. 1.055. Um, got my yeast pitched. Can't see it in there, but now it's just time waiting, and uh, we're good to go. All right, quickly, uh, back in the office. Everything's tied up, stored away. Uh, it's approximately 12.25, so <clears throat> that took me an hour and 15 minutes from beginning to I am back to where I'm supposed to be, except I need to take some lunch. Um, <clears throat> now, the gravity reading shows approximately 1.055, so maybe a little bit... Uh, more um, uh, dextrose would have aided in it. Uh, original gravity characteristics, uh, according to my notes, say about uh, 1.056. So, yeah, I can maybe add some dextrose for now. While it's still, you know, fresh, I might, I might do that. Uh, it's close enough. That I think I'd be pretty pleased with it. So, um, other than that, got my hop still here. I'm going to be waiting until. Fermentation is done. I'm gonna actually store them in the uh, in my fridge here in the office and then dump them in. Ah, uh, so uh, well, any questions? Let me know. Um, I'll be trying to make a brew like this every now and then. Uh, holiday brews coming up. Mm, maybe a quick spice beer using uh, Cooper's Dark Ale. Um, we'll see. Uh, cheers and beers and. Um, Again, if you have any questions, feel free to ask uh, on calculating IVUs, um, any on uh, calculating color, etc. Um, I have some charts where you can uh, uh, use to do that to determine your final beers as you customize them and make them if you're, you wanted to venture off the path. Um, so uh, again, any questions, ask them below um, or send me an email. Cheers. Quick shot of my hops, uh, my, my, well, the dead hops now. This is where I got those hops um, that I threw in the, well, I plan on throwing into the brew. So, a uh, fall day in beautiful Seattle, Washington.